I hope you're having a great day. And I just want to have a few shout outs to some of the, the people who sent me some comments. They were great. Thank you so much for watching. And just thank you so much for joining me on my journey of sharing uh, some of the wisdom that I've collected along the way. Some of it's useful, some of it not. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for just hanging out with me. Uh, it's, it's so much fun, really. So what did I want to talk about today? And I realized that there's a lot of advice or just insight that I think Gen Z or the younger generation, the younger kids could probably learn from a 50-year-old. And, you know, not a lot of families sit down and have dinner and talk anymore, right? So back in the day, parents used to sit down with their kids. I know this sounds so boring. And yet the TV wasn't on and there was no devices at the table. And yet we used to talk. Um, and definitely did not raise our voices and, you know, gave our parents the, you know, respectful answers of what we did at school and what we're up to. And, and um, you know, maybe, maybe sometimes even lied, you know, so we wouldn't get in trouble. But it was great because we had a stage and I think that's what the dinner table was. It was a stage to have conversations with the people that we loved. Um, just to go over what what went on and to process things and, and to talk about things and ask questions. And it was really sacred, I think. In my house, it was for sure. We always ate together. Um, I even, you know, just helped my mom set up the dinner table. You know, I just remember that time coming every day and you had to drop everything and go, okay, it's time to eat. And it was really a time to connect. And over the years, obviously, life has gotten so much busier do people really sit down and eat dinner together? Um, I know that in my house, we definitely every Sunday have a big Sunday feast. That's what my kids call it. Uh, throughout the week, because we have school and work and all those, you know, things, I do try to sit down with them, um, you know, when we eat, even if I'm not eating at the same time, because uh, I'm doing a lot of keto and fasting, as you can see on my partner's channel, um, sometimes even OMAD. So, you know, just to age gracefully, you know, I'm, I don't eat as much as my kids were growing. So I do make it a point to sit down, though, with them and enjoy dinner and enjoy that atmosphere. And one of the best things I ever bought in my life or invested in was a big, huge maple dinner table. And our whole kitchen, living room is surrounded around this one table. Everything happens there. And really, I, I saw that it's a stage. It's a stage where we share. And we talk, and sometimes we fight and argue, and that's totally normal. Um, and I hope you guys have that, too. I hope you guys have a place where you can sit down, share food, share thoughts, and share that emotion and feeling um, of just being around people you love. And it can be one person. It can be ten. Uh, it's so important to be heard and to hear and to listen. But... What I've noticed is that tradition is not very popular anymore. Now, maybe it is more in Europe or more in other countries, but in North America, I don't really see that happening. And so I thought, well, you know what? Besides, you know, teaching my kids a thing or two, which hopefully they'll absorb when the time is right, I've got a lot that I can share with younger people who might not have that dinner table. They might not have that exchange. They might not have that, that, that hearth, let's say, to, to chat over and to share over, like human beings have done over a fire for, for, for millennia. And so I just want my younger audience to know that, like, I'm really here for you and all the things that I can offer that I've learned, and I've learned the hard way, you know, learned through hard knocks, a school of hard knocks. I would love to share with you so you don't have to suffer as much. Now, don't get me wrong. Suffering is a school. It is a part of the school of life. We all suffer. We don't get out of this without scratches. Actually, we don't get out of this life alive. Um, one of the boring things I love to say to my kids. So, you know, you're going to get scratched up. You're going to get hurt. And every time we get hurt or offended or upset, you know, it doesn't need to bring down the world. It doesn't need to ruin our relationship. It doesn't need to be an ultimatum that might destroy a friendship. You know, it's just something that, you know, we've got to learn to roll with sometimes. You got to, you got to pick your fights, right? You got to pick the fights that you know are worth fighting for. 
And just getting easily upset or offended at every little thing is going to actually stop your growth. It's going to stop you from moving forward because that feeling of tightening up and hurting is a very like, you know, internally crushing kind of feeling. Like when I get upset, I literally feel this like energy, this, this, this hurt that goes down my throat and I swallow it into my gut. And I used to feel that quite a bit when I would get angry, excuse me, and either holding it down so I wouldn't explode or I would explode and letting all of that anger out because it had accumulated, you know, in my solar plexus. It didn't end up very productive for me. Now, let's say, okay, maybe I had some great fights and maybe I won some great fights. But now looking back at it years later, was it, what was, what was so important? What was so important fighting over? I don't even remember. There's some friendships that could have been pretty good ones if I had 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 some patience or if I wasn't so quick to be quick, you know, to anger or quick, quick to be offended. And I think this generation more than, you know, any other is a little bit, well, maybe even engendered in a way to be super sensitive. And I need you to know that you are so strong, that you are so powerful, that you don't need to give in to every little slight uh, that comes your way. You know, life is going to shoot arrows. That's a part of learning how to dodge and duck and get around certain challenges in our life. And the better you become at, you know, sidestepping, sidestepping, you know, a difficult situation, you know, you'll be, the better you'll be. Now, sometimes, you know, people want to, to fight and you can see it coming. They're coming for you. I've been the kind of person, I don't know why, but people love to argue with me. I've never been popular. I've never had a lot of friends. I've had really good friends though. Like I could count them on my, my one hand, but I've never been someone where people look at me and say, Oh yeah, man, I like her. She's nice. Or no, because I always spoke my mind and I was always a straight shooter and people don't like that when they get called out on their shit. So yeah, I did make a lot of enemies along the way, but it also made me street smart and battle ready. And I was always ready to defend myself. And, you know, growing up, let's say, at the, at the, at the tail end of Gen X, begin, beginning of the millennial, right? That I'm kind of that in-between generation. I grew up analog, you know, in my childhood. But, you know, growing up as a late teenager, early adult, I was digital. So I'm kind of on this cusp. But I did learn at that time how to hustle. You know, and that's, I think, a signature of that generation, of that generation. We know how to hustle. We know how to fight. We know how to, you know, pack those punches if we got to. But, you know, it's something that you save for an important situation where you take a stand, right? You got to say, is this a hill I'm going to die on? Nowadays, it feels like everyone gets upset at everything and you can't say anything or you can't express your opinion. There's no true freedom of speech because you're constantly looking left and right. Who am I going to offend now? You know, oh shit, am I going to lose my job? Am I going to lose a friend? Am I going to lose a partner or lose? It's always in this detrimental sense, but isn't it better? Like I've always loved knowing if someone likes me or not, right? I don't want someone to be nice to my face. And that's kind of been like a, a Canadian thing where everyone is, oh, so nice to your face, but truly they're like just waiting to stab you in the back. And I couldn't live in a society where, yeah, we have like being cordial to each other, niceties, but this is beyond that. This is like literally not speaking the truth and admitting what is staring you in the face. And that's why one of the many reasons why I couldn't live in Canada, because just that lip service just makes me sick. I want people to tell me, hey, you know what, Mara, I don't like you. I don't like your opinion or I don't agree with you. And you know what? That makes me smile. I'm not going to get defensive. I'm going to say, okay, tell me why. Let's hear this. It, it's okay. Don't like me. I don't need you to like me. That's okay. I'm not everyone's cup of tea, you know, you know, or, or cup of coffee. Um, and that's totally fine because, you know, there are going to be people in your life or, or who are kind of like NPCs, you know. Um, they're not going to have a true effect in your life in any concrete way, but they are going to test you. They are going to show up in, in a certain moment, in, in a certain situation, and they're going to present you with a challenge. And either you're going to face up to it and be the moral and principled and true authentic person that you, you know, 
love yourself to be, that you try to be, or you can back down or you can fight and get angry and get defensive and close up and you can spew back the same rage people might be spewing at you. So these are challenges. And once we're able to be calm and be patient and process what's coming at us, you know, taking that 10 seconds to breathe, <laughs> you know, grandma always used to say like count to 10. Um, that is really golden advice because that allows you to center yourself, be in the moment and understand, okay, what is it that's coming at me? You know, is this just a small insult? Someone's opinion, who cares? Does it affect my life? No. Why would I waste my energy? Why would I let it bother me? Guys, I grew up in the 70s and 80s as a brown kid in Canada. I grew up, and I don't care if people don't want to hear it or not, I grew up around a lot of racism, a lot of discrimination. Uh, one of my... One of my, I don't know, stark memories as a child is always being the, the kid left over, never picked on a team or in a group, you know, and having the, having the teacher to do whatever assignment was or activity with me. And, you know, that's okay. I grew up realizing that, you know what, everyone is free to associate with whom they want. And, you know, as long as we're not hurting someone directly or attacking someone, it's okay. You know, but I did. I grew up with racism. And you know what? I grew up fine. It's okay. We all have challenges. Now it seems like in the world there's like reverse racism or a different type of racism. But it is human nature to discriminate. We're never going to be a people that just accepts everybody, loves everybody. Like, honestly, let's get real. This is who we are as human beings, right? We are flawed, you know, and we have a lot of growing to do. And you're never, no matter how magnanimous you are, it is very difficult to fully accept another you know, and that's, that's just the fact that our egos and psyches are separated from each other. We are here to interact with each other. And sometimes those interactions will not be as sweet, but that's okay. It's a part of growing up, learning who you are and performing yourself, performing your identity, performing all those things that, that you've learned about yourself and then putting it into reality. Like, is this who I want to be? Do I want to be a person who's going to be like, attacking everyone back the second I feel uncomfortable or threatened or judged. Do we judge each other all the time? And that's fine. We have to be okay with it. So my advice, you know, and my humble advice, if you can even try to, you know, incorporate it, I think you'll find that you're more peaceful and happier because really that's the goal at the end of the day is to live good, live well in your own mind, in your body, in your, in your space, in your, in your experience. Just like, brush it off your shoulder. You know, don't let things get to you so easily. It's okay. The world is not perfect. People are not perfect. We cannot go looking for justice in every little instance, you know, of, of animosity. It's just going to tire you out, you know. So embrace, embrace life and its experience and all the ugliness and all its beauty and, and just move through it calmly. Because it's the challenges, it's the pain, it's the tough struggles in our lives that, you know, make us who we are, give us character. Because it's how we react in those situations that determines really who we are. You know, because it's easy to be loved, it's easy to be popular, it's easy to be wanted. You know, but all of us must experience some kind of, you know, whether it's a rejection or some type of of a negative reaction from others for us to feel our own limits and ourselves and to say, how are we going to deal with this energy? You know, just let it be. Take the path of least resistance, just like a river flows. And you will get to where you want to go much more smoothly, much more easily and smiling, you know, and that's, that's, that's my goal. Just want you to be smiling with me. So cheers. Until the next time, <laughs> take care.